Welcome back to the LTM channel. I'm your host, Daniel, and once again, welcome to the Motorsport Report. If you're new here, first off, welcome. Um, this is a series where I briefly recap some motorsports across the globe. Of course, this week we'll be covering all the action from Formula E, uh, NASCAR Cup and Xfinity Series, and also the Bathurst Six Hour. Um, so if you do end up enjoying this video or podcast, uh, wherever you're listening from or watching from, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And if you're on Spotify, be sure to give us a five-star rating. Helps us get out there more. And also, you're more than welcome to check out our uh, V8 Supercar and Formula One podcast as well. Uh, it's located both on the channel and Spotify. And last but not least, we've also got a merch store. If you want to check that out, the link will be in the description below. And a shout out to our TikTok subscribers here, which you can see on the YouTube screen. So with that all being said, let's get cracking starting off starting off with Formula E. Easter weekend saw the E-Circus travel to Tokyo for round five of the 2024 ABB Formula E Championship, uh, which is actually the first uh, Tokyo E-Prix held as well, which is exciting. And uh, it was definitely an exciting race overall. Um, pole sitter Oliver Rowland got off to a great start, uh, and he took the early lead from Mortara and Gunther. However, on lap 25, uh, Roland was actually conserving some energy and actually handed the position to Gunther. And now, unfortunately for Roland, he was not able to actually overtake Gunther again, uh, which means Gunther ultimately won the to to uh, Tokyo E-Prix. Um, however, he did manage to finish second, um, so he recovered well, but unfortunately, you know, it is what it is. However, it wasn't as smooth sailing for everyone as McLaren driver Jake Hughes found the wall at turn 15 after a nudge from Lucas Degrassi, who actually ultimately DNF'd as well. Uh, and it was also a disaster for Evans and Jaguar um, after Mitch found the wall after a failed overtake attempt heading into turn nine. Uh, and unfortunately, he damaged his front wing. Um, it's definitely not the race Mitch Evans or Jaguar were hoping for, given is, given how it was their 100th race in Formula E. So a bit of an unfortunate one for them there. But now let's look at the top three of uh, the Tokyo E-Prix with Max Gunther winning for M Maserati. Uh, and then we've got Oliver Rowland for Nissan and Jake Dennis in Andretti. Uh, that is your podium. And looking at the top three for the championship after round five, we've got Nick Cassidy with 63 points for Jaguar, tying with Pascal Wehrlein, uh, who drives for Porsche. And then Oliver Rowland is 54th uh, for, uh, sorry, is third with 54 points. What am I trying to say? Uh, with for Nissan. So that is Formula E. Um, overall, decent weekend. Let's get straight into the next category. The NASCAR Xfinity Series travelled to Richmond for the Toyota Care 250, and boy, did it deliver. Um, the race saw Eric Amora uh, take the early lead with both stage wins in Stage 1 and 2. Uh, however, it was Chandler Smith who uh, was able to deliver in the second half and execute the win. Uh, however, controversy in the back between Joey Gase and Dawson Cram uh, happened after Dawson Cram bumped Gase off the road, which ultimately uh, ended the race for uh, Gase, which after getting um, substantial damage in the back of his car there, um, that was it was it was a goner, um, and he was furious. Uh, so what happened during that caution period? Um, Gase actually hopped out of his car, grabbed a chunk of his um, rear bumper, and tossed it at uh, at Cram's uh, wind windshield there um, as he drove past. Now, obviously, this was very dangerous, and I don't condemn any of it, but <laughs> you've got to give it to NASCAR. Um, they do. They always have drama and stories, no matter where they go. They're, it's one of the only categories in the motorsport world where you're guaranteed guaranteed drama. Uh, I love it. Um, although still I don't condone, you know, throwing a massive piece of car at a car. Um, luckily, you know, it's a tin top, so it's fine. But we we all saw what happened with that go kart incident many years ago with the with that I think Russian kid. Um, at the I think it was at the World Karting Championships where the I think he was Russian. I could be wrong. Um, he threw his bumper at 
the other carter and he got a life ban. So, and that's a whole other can of beans. But uh, just Google it if you want more information on that. But it instantly reminded me of that when I saw this incident with uh, Joey Gase. Um, but, uh, in last but not least, although as well, um, for all the Kiwi and Aussies out there who are watching, uh, Shane Van Gisbergen finished 15th. So, uh, he had a great weekend in Coda last week as well. Um, a bit of an average one this time around. And, uh, your top three for the Xfinity series is Smith in first. Uh, and then we got Almora in second and Gray is your th- top three. Now, let's move into the Cup Series. The NASCAR Cup Series uh, was nothing short of drama. Uh, The battle for the lead started very early on as Larson and Wallace were neck and neck for the first chunk of that race, uh, with then Truex actually holding the lead heading into the final stage. Um, It was pretty much anyone's race um, till the very end as strategies, you know, started to form and take place and continue to play out. However, um, that would soon change uh, as one final yellow occurred, bringing the race into overtime. Now, overtime can create a lot of chaos, uh, and it definitely did this time around. So what happened before we get into that? Let's talk about the crash. Uh, Bubba Wallace uh, actually pushed Cole Larson off, uh, which actually ultimately ruined their chances of winning. Uh, this, of course, created chaos with cars pitting and battling on pit road uh, to get ahead of one another. But it was Denny Hamlin uh, and his crew that managed to get ahead of everyone and take the lead and actually ultimately taking the Toyota owner's 400 race victory. Now, the thing is with Hamlin here, um, there is controversy going on at the moment. Uh a lot of people were claiming that he may have jump started the restart uh, or the final restart, uh, although nothing has officially been said by NASCAR about this. So for now, uh, as the time of recording this, which is on a Thursday, uh, he keeps his win for now. Um, but there was st- <laughs> there was a lot of bumping and shoving going on, a lot of, um, I guess, emotion uh, in the NASCAR field this weekend. As we head into the top three here, we've got Denny Hamlin obviously taking the win, but Joey Logano was able to get second place ahead of Larson. And uh, Truex actually finished fourth after um, having a couple... I've noted, I know... Noted Truex here because he was quite animated. Uh, He kept bumping Hamlin at the end of the race there. Um, I think from the looks of it, he may have got a potential puncture. Uh, I'm not sure if it's from Hamlin or someone else. I haven't been able to find out what caused that. Um, But yeah, he was pissed. He was not happy whatsoever. So that's the thing with this car. You get a lot of emotion (laughs) and a lot of stories like I mentioned before. So, the eighth running of the High Tech Oil's Bathurst 6-hour was just as good as the races I covered today. Uh, it was non-stop action across the whole six hours. However, um, it was safe to say, if you had a BMW, uh, you were guaranteed you're going to do well. Um, that, those, that car it was insane all weekend. That was the car to be in this weekend. Um, they dominated the 6-hour. And in saying that, though, despite the domination with the BMW, it did not hinder the excitement or the battling uh, one bit. Uh, it was neck and neck for the top four outright, um, all race. Um, however, though, for some, um, the bath- Bathurst bit. And uh, if you don't know... When Bathurst bites, it bites hard, and oh boy, did it. Um, We saw a lot of shunts across the weekend. However, um, probably the biggest shunt I have seen in a while um, at the mountain, and at least in the production cars, but also the biggest one of the weekend overall anyway, was young Ryder Quinn. Um, Now, unfortunately, he lost control uh, heading into the top of the mountain in his game over Mustang. Uh, and unfortunately, smack bang into the wall head, um, head first. And unfortunately, the car was squished. It was done for. But it's good to see Ryder actually walked out, uh, relatively unscathed. So it's good to see there. Um, he's a young, bright talent, of course, racing in Porsche Career Cup and doing quite well. He did very well, actually, at the Australian Grand Prix. Uh, he's also, um, I'm a, I am a fan, so a bit biased, but <laughs> uh, I'm keen to see how he progresses uh, through his career in the future. 
Um, hopefully this one doesn't beat him up too much. Um, I don't think it is. He's a bright kid. Um, but unfortunately, though, they were leading the the the, the class at the time, um, which obviously would hurt. But, you know, that's motor racing. It is what it is. You just learn from it and uh, try not to replicate it. Um, but, uh, yeah, it is what it is. But overall, glad to see he was okay. Um, but with that being said, it was all eyes on the lead for the final 30 minutes of the race. Uh, but with 25 minutes to go, Will Davison, uh, who was actually leading at the time in the number 23, uh, actually experienced gearbox issues. So um, what happened is I actually looked at what Will said on his social media, on Instagram. He claimed that apparently the car went in neutral um, sometimes. So obviously, you know, that won't help at all with straight line speed or anything. Um, you tend to need to have a gear to get going. Um, but unfortunately, that actually gave the lead to Ojeda heading on to the back straight. Um, but it also gave second place to Thomas Randall as well in his BMW. But in saying that, though, Will drove very well to manage to finish third just behind Tom. They had a cracking last lap battle. Uh, I do I do highly recommend to check out the, or, uh, the highlights. Um, there was a lot of action there. But despite the battle for second and third, it was the Mediki Motor Group BMW that claimed the out right win for 2024. Jaden Ojeda, that final stint was sensational. Um, great to see him winning that as well with Hodges and Mediki. Um, so they drove very well. Like I said, that BMW, um, yes, you know, it was anyone's race, that whole race, which is fantastic to see. Now, unfortunately, not everyone could watch it. It was available on SBS here in Australia. I don't think you could actually watch it worldwide, unfortunately. Um, but for those who, if there's a way right? If there's a way you can watch it, I highly recommend checking it out. Yes, they're production cars, so they're not as advanced as V8s or, or uh, Trans Am or um, TCR, for example, but they, they put on a cracking show uh, and it was fantastic to see. And it's a great way to spend Easter as well. Um, of course, it's been traditional now for eight years. Um, but with that being said, let's get into um, the results. So I'm going to be doing this a bit different. Uh, obviously I did the top three for the other categories, but, um, for this race at load, I'm going to just be announcing the winners per class. So starting off with the X class, the overall class, uh, sorry, the outright win, uh, Ojeda, Hodges, and Mediki obviously took the win for that. Uh, in the A1 class, we got Ucel, uh, Saltery in their golf uh, they managed to win that class. In the A2 class, we've got the Gomasol father and son duo uh, with Jason and Ben and Aaron Seaton in their Mustang. Now, in the B1 class, we've got the women team, which is fantastic to see them and managing to take the win in their BMW. Uh, of course, we've got Bacini, Prince and uh, Palermo. Um, so they massive congrats to them. In the C class, we've got Faulkner and Slaven in their Astra. Uh, D class, we've got Wooler and Barrick in their 86. And last but not least, E class, uh, we've got Jackman, Tibbets, and Westaway in their Mazda 3. So that's it for the weekend of action, uh, I like to call it. The Easter, Easter, the fast Easter, I guess you could call it. I don't know. I'm making these um, names up as we go. It's quite embarrassing. But if you guys enjoyed this edition of Motorsport Report, be sure to hit that like uh, and subscribe for more as well. And like I said at the beginning of the pod, um, be sure to hit the follow on Spotify and give us a five-star rating as well. Um, also, just a quick few things before I say goodbye. Um, stay tuned for next week. We've got our Japanese Grand Prix uh, review over on YouTube and Spotify. But you can join us live um, for that debrief, which will probably be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, one of those three days. So stay tuned for that. Um, that of course will be live streamed on YouTube and TikTok. But if, so if you guys have any questions and you want to be part of the pod, that's a great way to do so. And, uh, yeah, so curious to excited for next year, pretty much with the Bathurst six hour. <laughs> um, but that's all from me. Um, hope you, like I said, hope you enjoyed this. Be sure to check out our merch and stuff and whatnot. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for more uh, motorsport content. Uh, that's all from me. Bye for now.